We are leaders at Chestnut Grove. My favorite habit is seek first to understand, then to be understood. Be proactive. Synergize. My favorite habit is synergize because when you're playing tag, it's no fun just playing tag with one person. Sharpen the saw, sharpen the saw, sharpen the saw. Uh, we started in 2005 at Chestnut Grove, and uh, we wanted to make Chestnut Grove the best elementary school in Decatur. No one rises to low expectations, and we have high expectations of all our boys and girls. When Mrs. Teague uses the habits, she always thinks of what's best for the school, not best for her needs. She's always thinking win-win. We teach kids responsibility through the habits by teaching the habits, and one of the ways we do that is to teach them to set goals. They set academic and personal goals, and they monitor those goals each grading period. And so it gives them responsibility and ownership of their learning. I've been teaching 16 years, and the thing about it is, since we've been teaching the seven habits, I have the best test scores, no joke. Today in, in education, assessment is the number one focal point. And you, a lot of times you hear that people say, we need to get back to the basics, or the three R's, they like to call them. And as we look at seven habits, we think about the fact that it, it's an R, but it's a fourth R. We think it's the R that combines and brings all the other R's together. I see kids all the time have arguments at school, and they usually solve it by the think-win-win habit. The teachers solve some problems, but the students solve over half. When children take what's in the classroom with them to the playground and discuss and apply, you know you're onto something. I believe that students who have been through the seven habits will be planners. They will take responsibility for their own learning. These are skills that will help them do better in school, college, the workplace, and better families. We love the seven habits. When seven habits became part of the school at Chestnut Grove, we saw a change not only in students who began to take more responsibility, but also parents. Parents began to respond and talk about the difference they were seeing in their child, the motivation. I was really excited, and my husband was too, because we had both uh, been through the seven habits training with work, and we felt like it would be really beneficial for her to have those life skills starting as early as elementary school. We work with the children at school because they are within our circle of influence and we know that we can make a difference with them here. And they can take it home and make a difference in the community and in the church and at home. It's a win-win for our community. It's an opportunity to, to build a new generation who know how to relate with one another in a positive way. We're looking at implementing it district-wide and what we see the value there is that we start with a kindergartner at five years old. In 13 years, we've got the ability to change our entire community, the mindset of an entire community in 13 years. There's, there's not another program out there, another initiative that has the ability to do that. In the long term, we'll have finer citizens and we'll have children that are leaders in their school and at home and in the community. Why well, leave it to chance whether or not a child has these skills? Why not level the playing field for everyone and give every child the opportunity to have those skills? I am convinced that as you teach these principles to young students, you will be creating a generation of leaders, one child at a time. You will help them find their identity, their full sense of worth and potential. And that, in my mind, is what leadership and teaching is all about.